not in his kingdom. If heaven is where you came from, then there should be a reflection of heaven in your life. Are you getting me now? And he said, the streets of heaven are paved with gold. Are paved what? So there's no poverty in heaven. Poverty is an anathema in heaven. Now, let me say this to you to humble you. If you don't want to prosper, they are not ready for heaven. The most dangerous thing about the prosperity gospel is that it preaches a contradictory message to the true gospel of Jesus. While Jesus said we would have troubles in this world, the prosperity message says you should only express blessing. While Jesus said you must take up your cross and follow him daily, prosperity theology teaches that if you sow seeds of faith, you won't experience hardship. And like our man of God said, if you want to experience heaven, you should not live in poverty. But many of the biblical patriarchs lived and died in shame, poverty, penury, and were vagrants in the world. Apostle Paul called them the rich of the world. Yes, it is true that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and others lived in ostensible wealth, but wealth was not the focus of their relationship with God. Not in his kingdom. If heaven is where you came from, then there should be a reflection of heaven in your life. Are you getting me now? And he said, the streets of heaven are paved with gold. Are paved what? So there's no poverty in heaven. Poverty is an anathema in heaven. Now, let me say this to you to humble you. If you don't want to prosper, they are not ready for heaven. Because he said, the streets of heaven, don't be holier than God. So if you say, I don't like, I don't like to be rich, I don't like to be wealthy, then you are saying, I don't like to go to heaven. Because your heaven, where you're coming from, your country, where you're coming from, there's no poverty. In the Garden of Eden, there was no day Adam prayed for wealth. Adam was stupendously wealthy. He did not build from a pool. He had pools all over. Adam did not want to say, Jesus name, I need breakthrough. He was inside breakthrough. Adam was so wealthy that there was no prayer request of any need. But he mismanaged it. He did what? He mismanaged it. Adam mismanaged what God gave to him. He said, take everything here. All is your own. Take it. These are the rules. These are the what? The rules. And then Adam just all of a sudden mismanaged what God gave to him. And God says, since you have mismanaged it, give it back to me. I collect it from you. Every time you mismanage what God gives to you, he takes it back. Now, God said to him, he said, Adam, <laughs> the whole of everything here is your own. But I'm giving you an order. Don't touch this fruit. Is that clear, sir? He said, manage everything in this garden. But this one is mine. Don't touch it. But Adam mismanaged it by touching what he was asked not to touch. In the kingdom of God, we live by laws. We live by what? Laws are simple principles. When you are lawless, you'll be lifeless. The coming of Jesus did not break. He only broke the laws of the altar, but not the Bible is a book of laws. The book of what? Laws are simple principles. Can you commit sin now and go to heaven? Can you say that is removed from the Bible? Is there no more heaven? Is there no more hell? Now, God is simply saying, this is my law to you, Adam. Take everything here, but this one don't what? Don't touch it. You all know the story. Is that not true? Hey, glory to God. When Adam touched it, God said, you mean Adam, you touched it? What is it that Adam touched? I'm going somewhere. Now listen. If it was apple, by symbolic illustration, then you should, and you and I should not eat apple again. True? If it was adultery, 
It was only one woman, so there won't have been anywhere to commit adultery. So what is it that Adam did? What was the sin he committed? Because you need to ask questions. That God will get so angry as Adam, you mean you committed this sin? Get out here. Did he commit adultery? He did not eat apple. It's not apple, let him eat, please. <laughs> you get up so first. Well, after you, you, should, you shouldn't be eating apple again. That means after you eat apple, you already committed sin. And that's some of you ate apple even yesterday. <laughs> Adam touched the tide. And I did what? The tide was the only thing God told him not to touch. He said, This one is yours, but this is mine. Don't touch it. So every time you touch your tide, you are living in dishonesty. You're living in what? You are tampering with that which God has told you not to touch. Many Christians are not honest with their tithing. Are you hearing me? They, they touch it today. They say, God, forgive me. Now listen. Every time you willfully disobey God, there's a consequence. In the light of the scripture, the prosperity gospel is fundamentally flawed. At the bottom is a false gospel because of its faulty view of the relationship between God and man. Simply put, if the prosperity gospel is true, grace is obsolete. God is irrelevant and man is the measure of all things. Whether they are talking about the Abrahamic covenant, the atonement, giving, faith, prayer, or tithe. Prosperity teachers turns the relationship between God and man into a quid pro quo transaction. As James Gove noted in a 1990 Christianity Today article, God is reduced to a kind of cosmic bellhop attended to the needs and desires of his creation. This is a wholly inadequate and biblical view of the relationship between God and man. And with Pastor Ibiomi saying that Adam ate his tithe, even before tithe was ever mentioned, this sums up their unwanted and inordinate greed. Thank you.